Ballard Score, brought to you by BSN2, Nightingale, Row 1. Now, what is the Ballard Score? It is a technique used for gestational age assessment for a neonate. It assigns scores to six different criteria, the sum of which gives an estimate for gestational age. There are also two different categories, which are the physical and neuromuscular criteria, which is very important. And there are two different categories, of which you'll be adding later on. The scoring allows for the estimation of an age range between 26 weeks to 44 weeks. Now, some more information about the Ballard score. The scoring relies on intrauterine changes that the fetus undergoes through maturation. The physical part depends on anatomical changes, while the neuromuscular part depends mostly on muscle tone. Now, looking at the criteria for the neuromuscular maturity, there are six different parts for it. Posture, square window, which is the wrist, arm recoil, popliteal angle, scarf sign, and heel to ear. Now, you can see that some parts are missing. That's because uh, a four for posture can also be considered a five. So, might be a little confusing, but uh, there is no five for some of them, and that's okay. So just put a four for that, and that's basically the best that you can get. So the lower the score, which is, it goes all the way to negative, the worse it is. The higher the score, the better. Now, what does, this, what does this all mean? Posture means the positioning. Very uh, conducive to the picture there, as you can see, on how the baby can look. Next is the square window, which is the flexibility of the wrist. Looking back to the picture, that angle should be the wrist. Now. If it can't go more than 90 degrees, if the wrist can't flex more than 90 degrees, that's the worst you can get. If the neonate's wrist can completely flex all the way where the wrist is all the way down to the arm, that's the best score you can get. Next is the arm recoil, which is the flexibility of the elbows. So same thing here, the more that it can flex, the better. The less it can flex, the worse it is. So if the baby can't flex his arms, that's bad. If it could flex completely more than 90 degrees, that's the best you can get. Popliteal angle, the flexibility of the knees. Now it is checking for the knees. Uh, the worse that they can't flex it, the worse the score is. If they can flex it more than 90 degrees, that's the best score that they can get. Now is the scarf sign, which is one of the more confusing criteria. Scarf sign determines the flexion and resistance of the shoulder. So as you can see from the picture in scarf sign, if you can completely put the elbow past the midline all the way to the other part of the chest, that is the worst part because you want the shoulder to give resistance versus the best one where the shoulder is giving uh, significant resistance, which is the best result that you can get. And the uh, midline part of it the semi-good one is the number two, where the elbow is still at midline, but there is some resistance. And finally is heel to ear. Heel to ear is the resistance now of the knees. Now, the knees should be able to resist going at a completely 90 degree angle, as you can see. The feet should, or heels should not be able to go all the way up to the ears. If it can, that is the worst it can go. That means the baby is very immature. And if the knees resist a lot, if it can't go more than 90 degrees, or if it can't reach up to 90 degrees, that's the best. Now that covers the neuromuscular maturity on that. Now we are moving on to the physical maturity. Now this one's a lot more easy since all of the criteria is laid out right here. Now it is six criteria, and it is also divided for male and female. So the six criteria is the skin, lanugo, plantar surface, breast, eye slash ear, and then the genitals, which is divided again between the male and female. The skin, from worst to best, is 
Sticky, friable, transparent. That's the worst that you can get. While the best for skin is leathery, cracked, and wrinkled. Next is Lanugo, which is the cheesy white substance that's around the baby once they're born. The worst is that there's none. Next is that it's mostly bald. That is the best one. Now is the plantar surface, which is basically you're looking over the bottom of the foot. Now, if the heel to toe is 40 to 50 millimeters, that is the worst you can get. And if it can be more or more than 40 millimeters, no, scratch that, less than 40 millimeters, then it's negative two, even worse. And then the best is that it creases entirely over the sole. So there's a crease over the sole of the foot, which is the best. Next is the breast of the neonate. The worst is the is that it's imperceptible, as in you can't see it. The best is that there is a full areola with a 5 to 10 millimeter bud. Next is the eye slash ear. The worst is that the eye's lids are fused together. If they're loosely fused, that's negative one. If it's tightly fused, that's the worst. And as you can see, there's varying amounts, but the best one is that for the ears that it is thick cartilage and the ears are stiff and that the eyes are able to open. And now is the genitals. The worst genitals for the males or a neonate would be a scrotum that is flat and smooth. Meanwhile, the best, the testes are pendulous with deep rugae. Lastly, for the females, the clitoris prominent and the labia flat. That is the worst one. The clitoris should not be prominent and the labia should not be flat for a neonate. But the best, which was core of four, is that the majora cover, clitoris, and minora are all visible. Now, once you put all your scores together, now you have to add it all up. So going back to the slides, so you get the total for the neuromuscular maturity on the bottom right. So you tally it all up. Then you get the total for the total physical maturity score, tally that all up. And now on the right, you could see that you put them all there, then you add them to get your total. Now, once you get the total, you could base off your total on the maturity rating. Now, the maturity of the neonate uh, you have to remember which ones would be the most ideal. Premature, one of the worst ones, it is. it means that the baby is less than 34 weeks old. Late preterm is 34 to 37 weeks. Early preterm, 37 to 38 weeks. Full term, which is the most ideal, is 39 to 40 weeks. Late term is 41 to 42 weeks and post-term slash, slash post-mature is more than 42 weeks. So as you can see from the maturity rating, in order to get a full term of 39 to 40 weeks, the best scoring would ideally be between 35 and 40. That is the most ideal. And based off that maturity rating on the bottom of it, you could also put by the gestational age by dates, and by sound and by exam. So that is the Ballard.